Oi, oi, this week, I'm actually gonna do some electrical. Last week, I was pretending to be a chippy. We got that wall done and a few other bits and pieces, but things have changed and we have been pushed forward a little bit with the pool. I was doing a few calculations and trying to figure out what I really wanted. I was gonna run six mil, but I've come down to, where are we? Cable size, we've come down to 2.5. You're probably asking why the difference. It was either going the six mil, run it all the way out and do a subboard. Obviously with any subboard, you've got to do minimum six mil. So that was going to be plan A. Then I was just going to have the two circuits coming off that. Um, two 20 amps to two 10 amp GPOs. Then after sort of thinking about it, I think it's a little bit of an overkill. If anything, it's really good for future proofing. If it was beyond the pool at the back of the yard, I think I definitely would have gone the subboard route. But realistically, if I just run two 2.5 twin and earths straight out, I can get 20 amps to both double GPOs. I'll probably get two on the pool circuit and one on the heater circuit. And we'll just put that bonding, that earth bond cable straight into the back of the dedicated pool circuit. That's legal. And we'll then test it out. So if that cable tests out more than 0.5 ohms back to the board, then I'll have to upgrade that to a four or a six mil. But I don't think we should have that trouble. I was just going through gear, seeing what I've got. I've got one roll of 2.5 twin and earth. Um, I bought this from the last house, but then I realized obviously I'll need to get another roll because I'll do two, two runs just to make it easier. I'll do them simultaneously. I don't have cable rollers. 15 years as a Sparky, imagine that. I don't own any cable rollers. And that's obviously because I've worked for a company for 15 years, they've always provided that stuff. So I'm gonna have to make up some, I don't know if you guys know how much they cost, but they're not cheap. So I'm thinking about just making an A-frame out of some timber. Maybe not that stuff, maybe some offcuts that I've got floating around. Just bits and pieces like this I've kept. Make a couple of A-frames, get a metal pole, or figure out what I'm gonna use for that, and utilize that. So we'll go to storage. I've got another drum of cable there. We'll get that, see if I've got anything there that I can use for a bar. And then we'll finally do some electrical work. Although I've seen the packout boxes. Usually I use a milk crate. So if this doesn't work, I might look at milk crates, but I think that'll fit too very nicely. If I had to get more, I'd probably do something else, but I think I might utilize that and we'll just go get the cable. Awesome. I'm running cables through the ceiling. You know what that means, yeah? Surely. Getting the big guns out, literally. <laughs> I've been waiting to use this. I've literally not pulled it out of the packet. So if you haven't seen this, it is from Green Lee. It's my first Green Lee product. Grabbed it on Amazon, Amazon UK, I think, or USA, one of those. Cost me 180 bucks delivered, but I had to grab it. So that's what we're looking at, as hilarious as it is. It's got a fish reel on the front. I think that's actually, it's not like an aiming device that, like a scope, it's uh, for a torch. So a torch can fit in there. So you can see what you're looking at through a ceiling. And that's a thick instruction manual. Wow. I, I don't know about it. Like, it actually says to tie heavy string to the eye of the dart. Yeah, that's fine. If pulling lightweight cable, attach the cable directly to the dart. I could not imagine what cable you're running where you're attaching it to the dart and shooting. Surely not. So you got this little thing on the end, I guess that's to a, uh, it's very, very fine fishing line. Just that goes through there. It doesn't actually say how to attach it to the dart. Cause I would think you'd want to put it on this end. I'm just going to put it on that end. I feel like I should go in the yard for this. <whistles> Worked just fine doing it that way. Oh, we're on boys. Well, works. I'm gonna give this another go, but this time I've got a string line attached. Just going straight to the end. Goes average with the string line attached. 
don't really rate it with the string line, but I don't trust that uh, the fishing line is so light. Surely it won't last. We're gonna get through here. We'll shoot one through and see what happens. Gonna be a good shot through here. Surely not. What was that? So far, I think this is a waste of time. Ah, <laughs> oh. oh, I'm just gonna go the fishing line just to see how well it works. So somehow the end of the uh, fishing line, that little thing has broken off. Might have to, uh, might have to see if I can tie it on. There is a little eyelet on the end and on the original f diagram, it did actually show the fishing line going through. I'm assuming this fishing line is gonna break so quick. I don't know why they put such smaller gauge fishing line on it. So we've got the fishing line on the end. Come on, fly true. <laughs> yeah, it snapped the bloody line. You're kidding me. It, oh, I'm, seriously, I had really high hopes for some reason for that. I'm actually pretty pissed off. I'm actually, yeah, quite pissed off. 180 bucks that cost. Like, I didn't realistically think we were gonna use it full time. Thought it might be something like, might come in handy, you know what I mean? Why am I even trying to fix this? What am I gonna do with it? I'm pretty, I'm pretty annoyed. Waste of time, waste of money. Oh, a bit of fun, eh? <laughs> That's why I'm here, eh? To do the stupid shit. Ah, well. So I guess that's a no from me, yeah? All right, screw that. Going back to my roots. Bit of conduit, rather 20 mil, but 25 will do. So we want pull pump. If you notice, any time I write something on a piece of cable, I'll always do it a couple of times. It's just habit, like realistically, I sh shouldn't have to do it here. Uh, there's not many cables and it's not much really that can go wrong, especially because it's just me. But it's just something to get into a habit with, especially if you're in commercial doing a lot of cabling. Um, when it comes to numbers, it's even worse. Definitely use the dot then. It just shows you which way the number is. So you could have a six, and if there's no dot, you might look at it and look like a nine. Uh, it happens all the time. 51 can look like a 15. Uh, 91 can look like a nine, uh, 16, so forth. So all I ever do, like, so let's just say I do a 16. Do one, six, and a dot. That just means 16. If you're looking at it upside down, uh, which way we'll go that way. Sort of looks like a 91. And if there was a dot there, you'd know it's 91. It's just really good to get into that habit. So what do we got? Pump and heater. Pull out a bit of this. And then we'll smash it over. All right, so I'm gonna go step this out. And all that means is I'm going to walk out how many meters it is roughly from here to where we're going because we're, we're only going straight from now on. So if we go roughly about here, so you got one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, we'll go 14. So we've got to go to here, so we've got 14 meters to the corner. We want, let's just go three, let's just go 17 meters. So 17 meters from here and we've got one, two, 
three, this is four, let's go five, so five meters. So what's that, 12? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. As you can see, to the wall and a little bit extra, got to get there. And that's all the length. I could probably pull it back a tiny bit as it'll um, need to go around that corner. Yeah, you can see I've pulled it a little bit too much. So by the time I pull that back, something like that. So I don't think I'm going to be clipping this in today because we're going to have other circuits to go through. So. I want to make sure everything's all nice, run in first, and then we can fully tie in, tie in. I don't need to tie in any more clip in, used to commercial. Um, I'm going to put my cable stapler. Hey, I need to get organized again, running out of batteries. All right, so I'm going to throw a quick one. I'm gonna throw a couple, just one here, one down the corner, just to get it in place so we can get a rough estimate, chop it at the end. And I just really wanna use the cable, cable stapler. That's uh, the main reason. Um, bu, 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 bu. I'm just gonna leave it hanging at the moment. So that's enough. Yeah, that's shit loads to get anywhere. First one done for proper nails other than doing a review and uh, She's solid, that's nice. So I'm just gonna tape these up just so the ends are uh, not uh, just flying around, nothing can happen. Realistically, I don't think this gets done much in residential. I'm obviously from more commercial. So here's what the difference is gonna be. A lot of guys have sort of got a little bit annoyed at this method and I'll just show you the method quickly. So what we would usually do in commercial is strip we call it twist and tape so you're gonna strip it and then we're just gonna twist this is the first time i've actually ever used these uh knipex these are the 240s nice and big bigger head as well so we strip it twist them all together chop it off then we're just going to tape it up so usually just tape it up fold it over which way are we going that way and that's what we call twist and tape. And if you're in the USA, you're most likely going to be blowing up right now. That's pretty much what I got on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and I did a YouTube short on it. And what I found the difference was comparing the methods for Australia doing that to America is testing. And it actually sort of blew my mind a little bit. I didn't realize how little testing is actually required in the USA. So. I'm, all I'm doing is quoting what I've been told by other people from America. So if I'm wrong, let me know. But here we have to test. It's just a requirement. It's a legal requirement. If you don't, it's basically illegal. You've got to have all your test results and sign off on it. So in the US, apparently you guys don't have to do it. Some places have independent inspectors that come out and basically, I think, look at it. I don't know if they're testing. And so in a commercial aspect or residential, wherever it is, it's mainly in commercial that we're doing this. We're gonna be testing it first before we even put it into a breaker, before we put it into an RCBO. And so while we're testing, we're gonna be picking up that fault on multiple different tests. And so what this will mean is if we're doing it at the board testing, it means it should be already fit off in the field. So if we pick that up, then we know that there's a missing cable. And obviously 
The missing cables are more so in commercial. So on the jobs I was on, we had 30, 40, 50 people on site, and these jobs are going on for months. Sometimes there's four to six months between your running in and your fitting off. So within that six months, you've had multiple different people come in, move stuff, there might've been changes, there's other trades coming in, there's just multiple apprentices, different tradesmen, a lot of people coming and going, and with this, things go wrong, things go missing. There might be a cable missing in a wall. And with this test, we will figure it out and we will be able to rectify it. So just to clarify, we are not turning on boards with this fault on it. It's pretty much impossible unless you're not testing. So that's the main difference. Go to the floor, to the wall. Sweet. And before we cut, I'm pretty sure that one was the pump. So there, the first circuit's done.